Yeah, we're back. You're listening to Einstein and Gogo on 3 R. We do have a couple of guests on the phone now. We have Andrew Moss and Debbie Contaxis. Guys, are you there? Yep. Hi. Hi, Hi Debbie. Hi, Andrew. Now, Andrew, you're a teacher up there in uh, Canberra at... Um, Dixon. Dixon College. <laughs> and you run uh, a very interesting engineering program. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, a couple of years ago, I was uh, looking for a way of uh, allowing the students to sort of apply all the theory that we teach them in uh, grade le- uh, year 11 and 12. And I came across this um, this program called the UAV Outback Challenge. Yeah. And uh, the UAV Outback Challenge is really um, uh, a way of applying um, all the maths and sciences that they, they learn in school in a very cool uh, environment, which is, of course, uh, building unmanned airborne vehicles for search and rescue purposes. So, uh, I mean, I don't remember doing things to that level of sophistication when I was at high school. They, I mean, are they they're building them from scratch? Yeah. Uh, generally, what we do is we we uh, we order model kits in, like radio control model planes. Yep. And then we develop um, uh, the electronics, the autopilots, the uh, image processing computers, the radio links. Uh, all the student the students will be developing the so the internal smarts of the plane uh, to do the search and rescue operation. Okay. And what sort of range are we talking about here? I mean, I I, I have in my head images of these very small drones, but um, I mean, what what's the power source? How far can they go? What sort of things can they do? Well, there's really two uh, two categories of this competition. There's an open category uh, where these planes will fly for about an hour and a half and cover about 500 kilometers uh, of search area. Uh, in the high school competition, uh, they're smaller planes. They, they fly for about 20 minutes, uh, yep. and they will uh, cover sort of in the, in the order of 10 kilometers or so. Okay. And, and these are prop-driven? Uh, yes. Uh, there's, there's really no uh, restrictions on what, what we can use. We use um, fixed-wing planes uh, with uh, electric motors on them, uh, but uh, other teams have used uh, quadcopters as well. Mm, I love the quadcopters. I, I have one at home, actually, I got from my son, and uh, I, can't, I have to say I can't fly it. <laughs> He's really good at it, but I, can't, I just can't seem to do it. Debbie, tell us a bit about the plane that you constructed as part of the program. Uh, so our plane is like the, the the wings are two meters long, and we have a software in the. Actually, we have to build and design a plane that can search for a lost tourist lost in the outback, mm-hmm. and we have to send him a care package. So we have a drop mechanism. We have different people working for the plane. We have engineers who are making the drop mechanism, we have engineers who are making the software, we have maths and physics students. And what's great with that project is that we also have media students like me, so they can promote the project as well. Yep. And, yeah. It, it, sound, it sounds amazing. So, so these, these planes, they, they obviously have um, cameras and, and so forth attached to them and, and these drop mechanisms. So as you said, they're, they're several metres across. We're not talking about little, um, little toys here. These are quite large drones, essentially. Yeah, actually, yeah, we just got a new camera that we can use, uh, and we're going to test it today. It's the first flight that we're going to have because we had two crashes last week. All right. And we just fixed the plane. We built the plane in one day. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah, fingers crossed that we're going to make it today. Yeah. Andrew, you must get a lot of interest in this program. It's not I, I, It's not the sort of thing. There's a few programs like this around Australia. I know there, I think uh, University of Newcastle runs one of the bridge building programs, there's a couple of others, but I haven't heard of anything like this. Are you getting interest from outside the school as well? Yeah, the, the nice thing about this this program is that it's really developed a, a really good community um, of uh, both universities, uh, what we call colleges in the ACT, and high schools, uh, where um, we we kind of co- cooperate with other teams. Um, and you're absolutely right. A lot of the stuff that the students are working on are typically what uh, PhD students and master students uh, do, you know, from day to day. And, and now we're bringing this technology into uh, grade 11 and, or year 11 and 12 students, which is uh, giving them a bit, really big um, sort of leg up when they get into university and, and they can really see uh, where the, the theory, uh, when they get into university, can, can be applied, which is very cool. 
Andrew, you mentioned there was a competition element involved. How, how does that work? Does Do all of the teams come together on a day and have to find a particular lost tourist out, out in the wilderness somewhere, or how does, it ha- how does that happen? It's a, it's a very cool concept. Um, the, the original intent of the competition was to, to promote civilian uh, UAV technology in Australia, and uh, the scenario is that as the Outback Joe, who's a lost tourist, uh, has been walking in the Outback for a few days, and he's, he's uh, run out of uh, nutrients, and uh, we have to go and save him. We have to find the find him and um, and deliver a rescue package. Um, so our planes have cameras that can detect uh, where Outback Joe is, and then we have to deliver in in the high school category a Mars bar. Um, <laughs> and of course, I'm not sure how keen the Outback Joe is going uh, to be keen on the Mars bar. But in the open category, they have to deliver 500 milliliters of water. Hmm. So, so Andrew, is Chris here? Um, when uh, when you're detecting, when you say you can detect Outback Joe, uh, is that a thermal imaging thing that you're using, or is it some other technique? That's a, a vision, just a normal vision, uh, color vision camera. And uh, what we know about Outback Joe is Outback Joe's been walking. We know what he 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 was wearing when he left. So we know he's got blue jeans on, and he's got a fluoro uh, vest on. And so, <clears throat> what most of the teams do is they go, hmm. Uh, how much? How much in in nature? How much uh, blue is there? Yeah, there's very little blue in nature, uh, and so actually finding his blue genes is the easiest way to find uh, find out back Joe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, it sounds fascinating, Andrew, and I, I, I hope that there will soon be a submarine version that you'll be able to do up there at Lake Burley Griffin because that would be super cool as well. Maybe you can get that that going. But um, good luck with it and um, and keep it going because it's great to get these, these students involved at, at such a high level, I have to say, of engineering to be able to do this work. Um, I know some uni students who would not be able to do this well, so it really is impressive to hear that you're doing it up there at the public high school in, um, in Canberra. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, can I just add that the the competition's in in three weeks' time on mm-hmm. the twenty second of, of September, and uh, there'll be lots of uh, Facebook activity uh, and Twitter activity uh, to to um, follow along as well. It'll be very exciting. Fantastic, and thank you, Debbie, for for talking to us, and, and good luck with your plane. We hope it uh, hope there's no more crashes and, and it goes well. Yeah, thank you. That was uh, Andrew Moss and Debbie Contaxis from Dixon College up in Canberra, one of the public high schools up there, doing some really cool stuff, really cool engineering work. I have to say, I mean, that is very cool. I'm surprised that they're doing it. To, you know, when mm. you said they bought a kit, I thought, oh yeah, I can't bought a kit, yeah. but they're not just buying a kit. They're no. probably buying the wings and the fuselage, and then just adding all the other stuff themselves, which is which is really. Really cool stuff. Speaking of cool stuff, uh, time.